If you've used Godot's A Star 2D class, then you'll know that while it's a perfectly serviceable, all purpose solution, it can leave a bit to be desired for grid based games due to its generic nature. You have to manually add each cell, the connections to surrounding cells, and indirectly look up cells since node IDs are arbitrary as far as the algorithm is concerned. New to Godot 4, though, is the A-Star Grid 2D class, which implements A-Star pathfinding specifically for 2D grids and brings along a few useful features, including some performance improvements. And setting everything up is as easy as creating an instance, defining the size of the grid and its cells, allowing you to get both the grid cell and actual position of nodes in a found path, and then calling update to prepare it for pathfinding with these parameters. You'll also notice that cell IDs aren't arbitrary in A-Star Grid 2D, but are simply the locations of the cell in the grid, making it easy to match up with tile maps and other grid solutions. By default, all cells are connected to one another, which is a bit boring. To mark a cell as impassable, you can call setPointSolid and set the cell value to true. Do this for every cell you want to be impassable, and you're good to go. And once you're happy with the basics, there's three properties that drive how the optimal solution is found. The default heuristic, the use of diagonals, and jumping. The why and how of A-star pathfinding is a discussion for another time, so I'll be keeping these things fairly high level and just focused on usage here. First up, we have the default heuristic parameter. The heuristic defines how the optimal path is calculated, and the options are listed with the formulas behind them in the docs. Manhattan is for uses where diagonal movement is not allowed, as it calculates the travel cost using right corners between nodes. Chebyshev is useful for diagonal movement that's snapped to the grid, i.e. movement that's in eight directions, north, south, east, west, northeast, southeast, northwest, southwest. Diagonal movement costs the same as orthogonal movement with this heuristic, so you may see more diagonal movement in the solution than you want. Which leads us to octile, which is another diagonal movement heuristic for moving along the grid, but diagonal movement costs slightly more than orthogonal movement, therefore resulting in paths that prefer straight lines. And lastly we have Euclidean, which is useful for diagonal movement that is allowed at any angle, such as when you want to move over a grid but don't care about snapping to it perfectly. This heuristic calculates the cost using the straight line distance between nodes. Next up is the diagonal mode property, which determines how valid diagonal movement is determined, and we once again have four options to choose from. Always means any diagonal movement between two open cells is allowed. Never means movement will always be orthogonal and diagonally located neighbors will not be taken into consideration. At least one walkable means that at least one cell must be open along the diagonal path. This prevents a path from trying to walk between the corners of two walls, for instance. And only if no obstacles means that you won't move diagonally along an obstacle at all and rather need to be one space away from it. The last property I want to discuss is the jumping enabled property, which is an established method for optimizing A-star pathfinding for the uniformly weighted grid that A-star grid 2D uses. Because this algorithm jumps over open areas, you only return the location of each jump as opposed to a list of every cell along the path when this mode is enabled. But this mode can give you a nice performance improvement, especially in fairly open maps, so play around with it and see if it makes sense for your game. And that's it for the A-Star Grid 2D class. Not a lot to it, which is what makes it so much nicer to work with in a grid-based context compared to the A-Star 2D class. I'll link to the appropriate docs and some relevant articles down below, along with the sample project and the text version of this video as references.